everybody. Welcome back to Versus Live. My name is Corey Ballmeister. And I'm Ross Merriam. And we got Dan in the booth. Say what's up, Dan. What's up, Dan? Dan will be taking all your questions, comments, concerns, and I burns in the chat. Make sure to tag at Star City Games, and he will get his favorite one sent over to us. Today, we are jumping back into standard and really looking at three decks that did extremely well at the Zendikar Rising Championship last weekend from a very established pros uh, in the form of the decks I'm playing. Playing. And then Ross is playing some of the decks that are on the up and up, maybe tier 1.5 to tier 2, and just seeing if these decks changing up what all these major tier 1 decks are planning to beat, seeing if that is enough value where they don't have the proper cards against these three decks, or just seeing if the power level of these three decks is just too much to overcome, and we should continue to just be playing them. Yeah. So far... The standard deck has just been too good in the form of mono green food. But to be fair, I think that deck is unbelievable. I honestly think it's the best deck right now. And it just it, it just feels so good. I think Great Hinge is definitely top five, maybe best card in standard right now. Yeah, certainly in the conversation. Yeah. And I mean you just get to play Love Struck Beast, which is definitely top five as well. And I don't know. I think that deck is amazing. Though you saw, you know, I, I was playing a deck with probably more individually powerful cards in round one, but you were able mm -hmm. to win because they, I wasn't enough more powerful than you to compensate for the weaker mana base. So yep. the fact that you get to play really powerful cards while also having that sleek mana base with several utility lands is a really nice advantage of being mono green. And I just love the synergies, even with like Vivian, like me, Vivian, Wicked Wolfing, destroying something with a Brontodon. That sequence is just so unbelievably good. Just having that, you know, able to do at any time. Yeah, multiple permanents on the battlefield, answering multiple permanents from your opponent's side of the battlefield in yeah. on one turn. Yeah, pretty nice. So um, for this one, I'm going to be playing uh, Paulo Vitor Dama de Rosa's Demir Rogue deck that he played at the Zendikar Rising Championship. He missed on breakers and took ninth place. Um, but, you know, I think he'll be okay. He just won... Uh, he just won two awards in, in the esports category. One for the Brazilian Esports Player of the Year, and then one just Esports Player of the Year. Pretty crazy. If y'all haven't seen that, check out his Twitter. So congrats to him. What do you got up against me? Well, seeing as the one-color mana base works so well if you in round one, I figured I'd play one in round two. Smart. You play mono green food? <laughs> uh, I'm playing mono white aggro. This okay. is a deck that has been championed by our own Todd Anderson. Has an article all about it on Star City Games right now. Okay. And it's Thursday now, which is, I think, usually his day to go up. And so I, if I'm not mistaken, that article is now off of the paywall because it takes a week. So even if you are not a premium member, uh, you can check that article out now at this mm -hmm. point. I think. I'm not entirely sure. And We're I might be wrong. You. We're quoting you. But uh, <laughs> a deck that he has been doing well with on the arena ladder. I saw, you know, someone else you know, uh, tweet at him about how they're also crushing the arena ladder with the deck. Okay. Uh, looks really cool. I love Luminarch Aspirant. And that's probably the most powerful card in the deck, to be honest. Giant Killer is going to... Uh, not not be great in the rogues matchup, but certainly very good against all the green decks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's a nice one drop to get in addition to Venerable Knight. Okay. And they're just, you know, really sleek, aggressive deck. Hopefully take advantage of some stumbling. Yeah, and I mean, to be fair, the rogues deck doesn't usually like to be pressured that fast. Yeah, you, you want know? to be able to set up with some creatures of your own so you can start milling your opponent, then answer yeah. some stuff, then reload. And I don't think we've ever won a single match with Azorius Control or Demir Rogues on this show ever. So, <laughs> you know, we'll try to break that streak here. All right, before we get started, though, Dan, you got one question for us? Yeah. Sweet, so, what do we got? Uh, good question from our good friend, Histeus. Histeus, what up? Um, so... What is better about Standard right now? That we actually have a wide open format with lots of decks, or that there's a, a ceasefire of incessant ban talk? <laughs> yeah, I mean, one doesn't come without the other, you know? Yeah. So it's definitely two things that connect, but it is refreshing, even though I still will be streaming and someone will be like, all right, we need to get this card out of here. And it's like, that's why I love Struck Beast. Leave me alone, you know? I, like, I remember some rumblings about, like, Bone Crusher Giant, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. come on, Bone Crusher is seeing a lot of play, but that's just because people need Stomp. Yeah. Right? It's like yeah. the best two-banded removal spell of the format. Like that, you know, that's going to change. Exactly. And, and it did. There's a lot fewer bone crushers around now, although the card is still quite good. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm honestly surprised that we haven't seen gotten a bunch of people tr uh, 
yelling about wanting to ban Lovestruck Beast just <laughs> yeah. because of how ubiquitous that card has been, but uh, it is it is nice to have that ban talk go away for a while. No kidding. Yeah, and the format's great. The format's super healthy. You know, it rotates what deck is best from week to week. That's what a healthy metagame should be. Um, so yeah, standard is just awesome. I really wish there were uh, some more tournaments before we lose the standard, because who knows what Kaldheim's going to bring, you know? It's true. We might have some one mana, 8-8 eight, eight, you know, Vikings or something oh, coming no, that would play. be too good for aggressive decks. It has to be a four mana, 12, 12 hex proof, draw six cards, gain five life, destroy two of your opponent's lands. Yeah. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Escape two, but it, but it costs <laughs> four different colors, but they've also printed, you know, a land that ta a rainbow land with no downside. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So Whoa, fine. dude. Are you giving away but, the design? But only, secrets? but only if you play mid range, <laughs> okay, <laughs> if okay. your deck can be called mid range, then you get this land. That's why that's what happens when we're a little gun shy from all these uh, bands. Yeah. We just assume that's going to be in the next set. But so for now, it's pretty good. Standard great. This hand, not great. Ooh. I will be sending it back. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I'll keep this. These are probably some of the most important cards in this matchup. Um, and we got a facilitator, too. So I'm in. I'll okay. keep. Got another question there, Dan, while I'm shuffling? Yep. Uh, from Gecko11, 2023. What card do you hope gets reprinted into standard in call time? Okay, let's go. <laughs> um, um, I don't know. Monster. Do we know that there's always reprints? Like, does there always have to be reprints? Or? There doesn't have to be, but there's usually one or two. I think the only card that I want actively reprinted for the rest of the the duration of standard is Fabled Passage. I just think that land is awesome and really helps out mana bases. It does help out mid-range, but... Uh, other than that, I am I am such the person when it comes to a new set that it's like, what do you want from this? What do you expect from this? I don't care at all. No offense to your question at all, but I just I'm gonna play whatever they they give me. Yeah. And my speculation usually just doesn't matter. Uh, but you know, I'm definitely probably in the minority of that where I just like to let it come to me and then do my I, thing. I, but honestly, I'm there too. Like yeah. my, my job is to take whatever we have and do the best I can with it yeah. and build decks and win matches of magic. So, mm -hmm. you know, trying to speculate on what exactly is going to be there doesn't help that much towards yeah. that. I would say to answer your question though, Fabled Passage and Negate. I mean, I just think those are two good cards to always have in standard, but yeah, we, we we're pretty low on something we really need. Yeah. Let's bring back Oko, um, though, and then ban it the next week, though, just to tilt off some people. So I've got a, I got a pretty nice hand here. Real question is what I would want to get rid of. Want me to pick? I am inclined to get rid of that. Okay. And lead on a points. Okay. I am inclined to lead on a rune crab. Pass to you. Crab, 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 crab. Season helmet. Okay. Pass to. But that gets through my crabs. <laughs> I don't like that. Um. So since I can't really do much blocking to that crab anyways, I don't think I should try to... Uh, get too cute here with trying to like put a different blocker into play. So I'm just gonna start with a rune crab and I'm gonna mill you for six and I'm gonna scry. Do I want that? Um, I don't think so. I'm gonna scry this out of deems to the bottom and I'll pass to you. Okay, drew a third land. That was nice. Attack for three. Okay, I will take it. 17. And. At this point... Oh, you drew a land because I had milled six spells. Yeah. Could deal with one of the crabs, but... And if you had just played, like, you know, Temple, Mill, Three, Go, I would certainly deal with a crab and leave myself with three cards in Graveyard. Yeah. But even if I deal with one crab, you're going to be able to mill three. I can't really do anything about that. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have everything that you need in terms of the, your uh, Graveyard cards being enabled. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to play a Lava Brink Venture and put Cory under as much pressure as I can. I gotta read it. I'm not sure exactly what I want to name. If I name Odd, you can never chump block with Rune Crab. You also can't ambush it with a um, Thieves Guild Enforcer. But I think your most likely removal spells that answers it, the venture is Heartless Act. So the question is Thieves Guild Enforcer versus Heartless Act. 
or I mean, maybe even eliminate. Mm -hmm. um, if I name Odd, I could also stop you from kicking a Blood Chief's Thirst on it. Um, I think I'm going to go for Odd. Okay. I'm not sure how many two-mana removal spells you have, but I know you have four Thieves Guild Enforcers. That's fair. All right, so I am going to mill you for six. Now you hit some lands. All right, and oh, then I'll oh. pass to you. Only two, though. Mm. You said uh, what again? Mm. I said odd. odd. Okay. Okay. Uh, slam for six. Um... I will drown in the law. I will fight as one. Mm. What are your modes? Uh, just just human. Just human? I have two humans, so I can't target both. Okay. A little punished uh, for not doing that on my turn. Yep. Um, okay. And I'll play Thieves Guild Enforcer. Mill you for two. And now it's the question, do I want to... Do I want to just chump, essentially? I mean, I do make you discard a card, which is okay. Um, I gotta be somewhat concerned of my life total here. Um, yeah, I think I will block. Okay, I'll discard a Skyclave Apparition. Okay. You take four. I take four, yep. Go to 13. 13. Pass turn. Okay. It's going to be a Lurus turn. Try to rebuy that Enforcer. Mm, I think he might be right. All right, I'll mill you for six. Scry. I probably want to keep that. Yeah, why not? Uh, yeah, then rebuy Lurus. Pass to you. Not insane or anything, but okay. Okay, let's slam for six. Um, and that is odd still, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, nope. um, I think I'm getting to the spot where I want to chump. I can just go for like turbo mill plan, but yeah, I'm going to block. Okay, take three, go to 10. 10, yep. And then I'll play a selfless savior. Okay. Pass the turn. All right. This Lava Brink Venture might be going all the way. Might be, might be. Um, got some decent plays. I guess that is each of my turns, huh? That's pretty interesting. Okay, okay. That does work. Luris, on your turn, I can Thieves Guild? Mm, no. This is each of your, your turns. turns. Okay, all right. You can tell how much rogues I play out there, y'all. All right, that's not, uh... Yeah, that would make sense. Okay, so I don't want to do that. I have just great plays here. It's just which ones I want to do. Now, fight as one seems like your go-to piece of disruption here. And that is just, let me double check this. A human or a non-human plus one plus one and indestructible, indestructible or, or both. Okay. Um. All right, let's go with Low Mage's Domination on your 3-3. Three, three. There's six mana there, so then I'll mill you for three. And I'll pass to you. Uh, send in. I will block the good dog. Take three. Yep, seven. Three, seven. I will play another Lava Brink Venture. Okay. What are you naming? Uh, I don't know how many dominations you play main, but mm -hmm. it's usually not a ton. Maybe you have one mm -hmm. more. I think I'm just going to name Odd because that's all your blockers. Okay. So I'll name Odd. Have a piece of protection for another Drown or a Heartless Act. Okay. 
this point, I think I'm trying to limp over the finish line. You have four in hand, five? Four. Four, and I know Luris. Mm-hmm. Yeah, odd does hit all my stuff here. All right, let's go. Let's go Luris. Um, and let's just drown in the lock right now. Protect. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can protect that. That's <laughs> right. Do I want to do that? Okay. God. All right. I'm playing loose. Playing loose. So, yeah, I forget about the protect. Uh, I am just going to low mage's domination then. Is this through all of them, or do you just have a million? <laughs> I think there's three in the, three? In the main, yeah. Well, that is a giant tilt. Probably loses me the game. Yeah, I'm still afraid of uh, Maul of the Skyclave. I think I can safely attack with one of these. Yeah, I'll attack for three. Okay, I go to 17. Here we go. I don't have any of those two cards I just played. Deal. Pass the turn. Okay. I will on tap a draw. Let's go with a end of the story. Yep. Draw four. Okay. Um. This is kind of cute. All right, I do have a human and a non-human. I will of one mind. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was the new addition from this tournament, and I, I think it's quite sweet. Now, let's just play, I'll go get a, an island and play a Merfolk Wind Robber. I guess mill you for six. Then I'll pass to you. Yeah, the second all mages domination definitely did it. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. It was it two in my opener. If that made you feel better, it doesn't. <laughs> okay, good. Not at all. Yeah, next turn I have a nice turn. Yeah, I, I've, I've had real this real nice turn. Had to put the mall back at the beginning because of the mulligan. That yeah. might that would have helped. The mulligan. Yeah, mm. I have the skyclave, but I like I can't deal if I deal with any of these. The Luris just runs amok, so I have to hold it. For that and I just mm -hmm. don't have any way to get through like it yeah like, and next turn I just go like this yeah you get with getting a yeah, crab I, I knew you were just setting up yeah. being able to lure us with drown up and exactly. once that happens I just can't do anything agreed and I think I just actually kill you next turn yeah. with mill you know <laughs> like I was oh, gonna mill you I was also so drawing five cards. lands in a row <laughs> well you were getting those milled so <laughs> <laughs> true, true. <laughs> there you go all right all right well that's yeah. gonna do it for a game number yeah. one there you definitely you had the good start right like i mean the three one on yeah, turn no, two is very no tough wonder but halibut is definitely the ideal too yeah um yeah i don't know i i'm i wonder if i'm just supposed to name even because of lull mage's domination um yeah if you name even though then yeah of course you you dodge low mage's domination and drown in the law but then i just start blocking with thief guild enforcers you know like then that turn all i do is go luris bring back thief guild and you know then of course you can deal I, with luris, I, I had an apparition fight as one in hand so i, I would have had to have that answered okay <laughs> yeah so just, just based off of my hand because i had so, so much to deal with i don't know what yeah like two mana removal you have probably not not that I guess uh, then I low mage's domination. Uh, your three one, and then I just block with that. That's pretty no, bad. For well, you. that that's even, so it can't block. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah whatever. You didn't. Too bad. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, no, that, that's just the question. <laughs> like, I, I think that, I think that's really the only relevant decision I made for the entire game was yeah. w whether to side with odd or even. And I didn't want you to be able to, you know, set up a bunch of blocks. 
I didn't have the second one, right, when I made the decision on the first one. And uh, so if you're able to set up a late game Luris and just keep replaying a creature every turn, mm -hmm. like, that's going to stop me. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing is maybe you doing that and I didn't have time to actually set up Luris and I just had to jam it and then yeah. lose it. You know, maybe that uh, gives be, you the advantage. You're able to buy some time by just chump blocking with the crabs anyway if I yeah. need even. So I think you would have had the time to do it. I think so too. So, and yeah. I still just had seven life points. So, you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. either one wins. Unclear to me which is the, the right one to name. Agreed. But the only thing I am sure of is we're going to take a little break before we sideboard here on Versus Live. Welcome back to Versus Live, where we are sideboarding in our matchup between Mono Green Aggro and Demir Rogues. On my side, Idol of Endurance is clearly the card. Did you change your deck? Did you change your deck? I said Mono White Aggro. I said Mono Green. Did I? Did I? I, I, I was not. Chat, what did I say? <laughs> I think they're just going to say you said Mono Green out of spite. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. Mono Green Aggro. Mono Green Aggro. Mono Green Aggro. We'll Be see. Be honest, chat. We'll Pretty see. Pretty sure I said mono white aggro. Maybe, maybe I, uh, maybe I'm hearing you wrong, but I'm pretty positive you said. What? Is, what is chat saying? Hold on. <laughs> we need this resolved. Chat before help. We continue. Chat help. Anyways, it literally doesn't matter. So go on. Mono oh. spite. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing mono spite aggro. All right. <laughs> Idol of endurance, the card meant for this matchup, help you know with a, such a high creature count, it's going to keep my graveyard pretty low. Also generate a ton of card advantage. Another card I have to read here. Jeez, this played it against you them. before. Yeah, probably on versus live. <laughs> okay, okay, sure, sure. Yeah, that's probably pretty good against me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I am d choosing to trim a couple glass caskets along with one giant killer. Giant killers affect pretty bad the chop down side of it as a removal mm -hmm. spell, but the tap down actually lets you intercept a creature mid combat so you can't ambush me as easily. Mm. And that can be nice. I also just want a high creature grab from idle and a bunch of one drops to come out, uh, you know, aggressively. There's four glass caskets in the main. They're as a removal spell goes, it's pretty good in the matchup because it's exile based. You yeah. can't really remove an artifact, but uh, just two mana sorcery is awkward. I don't want one for one removal spells in the matchup anyway. That's your game plan. Uh, so even though the card does, you know, on paper match up well against Corey's threats, it's just not the kind of card that my deck wants in the matchup. I need to stay aggressive. I'm bringing in three non creatures. I can't cut that many creatures. So I'm going to trim two of the caskets. Sounds good. And from my end, I'm just taking out the one didn't say please, especially on the draw. Three mana counter spell. When your deck tops out at three, it's going to put me in a weird spot. And then just one of one mind. I still have two left in the the deck and then four into the story plenty of card draw and really this sideboard was just really clean uh you know really meant for the sideboard was really for non-aggro decks and then we have a couple things to help out against aggro so you could tell paula was definitely gearing to play against a lot of gruel a lot of mono green and you know uh still be okay against teamer it, it seemed like gruel and mono green was on the radar yeah. and he was right it was a yeah, top two, two so. Must play decks, yep. so okay what, what's the uh, consensus from chat it's it's not great because not they, great for whom <laughs> for us as a whole because we're not getting uh, appropriate data. <laughs> Are we you have saying Twitch chat? Mono blue, mono red, <laughs> mono yellow, mono colorless. <laughs> Once again, Twitch chat's remaining true to to just the code of conduct. All the options, get every color in there, every line of play. We love you, Twitch chat. Never change. Never Don't include me in that. Ever change. <laughs> I don't love you. <laughs> I wanted an honest answer so Corey could realize he was wrong, and you didn't give it to me. Well, clearly they didn't agree that you were right, so uh, yeah. So that I mean, means you're wrong. What are you going to argue with, me and hundreds of people? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that sounds like you. Have yeah. you ever met me? <laughs> Do we know each other at all? Yeah, ev all the other answers are just, I wasn't paying attention. I was paying more attention to my dog at the point. <laughs> well, that's, that's perfectly acceptable. That's the that's the first sane thing Twitch chat has said. Paying attention to dogs is yeah. very important. I'm even paying attention to dogs right now. Oh! It's a nightmare cat. Thank you very much. Look at your mask. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, anybody who's wondering, this is my beautiful dog. I put him on a mask. His name's Henry. Yo. Yeah, cute, right? <laughs> okay, I'll be on the play. All right, all right. And I will keep this in. Yeah, I think I'll keep as well. It's not quite as good as the last one, but still decent. I am going to lead on a selfless savior. Oh, man, dogs everywhere. All right, I'll leave on a triumph and pass to you. 
I will play Luminarch Aspirant. Okay. And I'm going to pump the Aspirant. It, it loses me a damage, but well, the savior is going to end up protecting something. Okay, I'll go to 19. Attack. You can go. All right, I have a Rune Crab. Then I will mill you for three. And then I will Blood Chief's Thirst this Aspirant. Nope, uh, nope, nope. I'll I targeted this. <laughs> All right, here go. It's a pretty good turn from Corey. My draws have been horrible. Excellent, excellent. And now I've got to put the counter here to attack into the crab. And you have no other place to put it. So. Um, <laughs> I mean, I have a venerable knight, sure, so sure, I could sure. put a counter here, make no reasonable attack this turn, but that also just protects me from another removal spell, uh, which seems somewhat likely. So I'm actually, I am going to do that. Let's okay. just play knight, put the counter there. Okie dokie. If Corey doesn't have a removal spell, I'm very happy. Um, I'll mill you. And... Just debating how I want to do this. Um, three cards. I am gonna say go. Upkeep. I'll drown in the law of this. Draw. Yep. Attack for three. I will take it. 16. Play planes and pass the turn. Ruh -ruh okay. Um. Now let's Rune Crab. Three car or six cards. Six more. Don't have the best uh, turn this turn, but not the worst. I will just, of one mind, draw two cards. Yep. Actual divination and pass to you. Actual, actual divination. Yep. We would like an idol of endurance, please. Please, no. One's okay. Attack for three. I'll take it. 13. And I have a lava brink adventurer. Okay. So now the awkward part is if I name even to play around domination, you can just take the venerable knight and trade venture for the knight. Mm -hmm. So I am once again going to awkwardly name odd. Okay. Love it. Love it. All right. Um... Let's go with... Blood Chief's Thirst of the Night. Um, temple, hit you for six cards. Scry. Don't want to land. <clears throat> and then I will say go. It's an okay draw. Track for three. I'll take it. Ten. See to ten. Play Castle Ardenvale. Pass the turn. End step, I'll draw on the law. And draw, oh, hello into the story. Million for six. Uh, do you have eight cards? One, two, three, four. Okay, yep, all into the story. Yep. One, a two, a three, a four. And then I will pass to you. That was pretty good into the story. Oh, four down on the lock, eh? Okay? <laughs> you did it with the innkeepers, so I figured I would, uh, I would do it here. All right, Shaheen, you better be doing some work. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> Man, you would uh, you wouldn't know who the who the person from North Dakota is with all those great planes in your hand. <laughs> Check, please. I'll see myself out. <laughs> no, I'll leave. <laughs> no, no, please. <laughs> I think I'll leave. Well, we got a somewhat quick match in the last one. You want to do one pity game here? Yeah. Try to have your thing, your deck do its thing. Yeah, I kept a four lander there that had a pretty strong start with uh, selfless savior, luminarch aspirant, venerable knight. Mm -hmm. Two three lands in a row to start the game. Yeah, it's not great. You had two cheap removal spells and two crabs. Yeah, and that's what was my openers: two crabs, two removal spells, three lands, and then I just drew into the yeah. story in the perfect turn into four just busted spells like. This deck is pretty three, insane. Th three lands when things line up. Three lands, Blood Chief Surst, Drown in the Lock, Double Crab is probably the ideal opener in an aggro matchup, right? He, well, no, it was two crabs, Blood Chief Surst, Drown in the Law, three lands. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, look, is there a better seven? Um, Does it get better? Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. To be fair, I had a lot of swamps, and it was a yeah, Zega yeah, Triome. You, you could adjust the lands, I guess. Yeah, adjust the lands. You know, and, like, you know. Yeah, uh, have had to have a Fable Passage in there somewhere in a key turn and a pathway. I, that was my first draw was Fable Passage, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's uh, it looked pretty solid. It seems like you, and this is the problem with Mono White, almost always, is you have to have a good curve because your deck does not draw a bunch of cards. You don't have any card selections, really, so you really need to just have a good curve out. But if you do, it's scary. That's the name of the game when you're playing aggro. True that. Yeah, I guess I'll keep. Yeah, I'll keep. Planes go. Okay. Um, yeah, this deck is sweet. Maybe I'm gonna start playing rogues. Uh, all right, I'm gonna do this. And do I want it's one match? <laughs> Starts. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Also, that was a B plus according to chat for the uh, pun. Wow, I don't I'm think I've ever made everything it. out. I don't think I've ever made it to B on my pun scales, so it's always in the C minus range. So I'm pretty proud of myself there. I will play this and pass to you. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, attack for three. Um, yeah, I'll take it. 17. Play a planes and play another Hallowblade. Okay. Pass the turn. End step. Mill you for two. Okay, oh, that was pretty decent. Um, mill you for two. Blood Chief's Thirst. Yep. Now, if I want to attack, am I going to block that thing? Likely not, um, but maybe. Um, yeah, I'll pass to you. Mull the sky clears. Okay. Equip one of the Howl Blades. Okay. Attack. Um, I'll block. I'll discard a Venerable Knight. Okay, I'll five. take five. Brings you to 12. Yep. Pass the turn. Sack. Untap. Um. I'm gonna crack Fabled Passage. I'm 
I'm gonna Blood Chief's Thirst Season Hollow Blade. Add the second Blood Chief's Thirst to go with your Low Mage's Domination, didn't you? What? Okay, pitch them all. I will attack. I will low mage's domination your season hollow blade. You're 19. <laughs> You're yeah, go. Just set to have it all. <laughs> yeah, my draw is insane. <laughs> my draw is insane. Absolutely bananas. <laughs> you have two in hand? Yeah. They're good. <laughs> well, one of them's into the story, I assume, because that's the best possible. Okay, they're not that good. Okay, so that one's into the story. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Okay, I figured it out. <laughs> Aspirant, counter on the Howl Blade, attack for four. Okay, I will go to eight. Pass the turn. Um, so now re-equipping is definitely a real cost. Or is a real, uh, you know, detriment for me. Um... I can probably wait to do stuff on your turn. Eh, maybe. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to buy Luris and pass to you. Uh, rubble, rubble, rubble. Yeah, my draw was absolutely bananas this game. I noticed. <laughs> I have a feeling that Todd Anderson is going to get a sternly worded tweet after we're done here. <laughs> whoa, 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 Dan. That's not how you give negative tweets to. It is at Shaheen Sarani. If you have any problem with the show. Of course. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, counter on the Hallow Blade with the Aspirant. Okay. And pass the turn. Um, end step, I will draw on the law, the aspirin. Untap. Um, <clears throat> I'll attack, trigger. Well, that doesn't trigger until you connect. Oh, sorry. I'll take six, go to 13. Okay. <laughs> Um, crack. Oops. All right, I will sack this, draw a card. Loris? Yep. Walk, wind robber, and pass to you. Two in hand? Two, yep. Selfless savior. The good dog. Okay. Skyclave apparition. I got this. Counter it. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, the two cards left in my hand were just too drawn in the logs. Arguably better than the yeah it's than having up it, there. but no, not by much. Yeah, my draw was just absolutely bananas. Yeah, I think I win either of the other two games with my draw. With that one, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. But yeah, I think uh, I think that draw beats 
every deck in the format. Like, that's a tough one. Yeah, no, that's uh, the power of rogues is that when your engine's humming, your deck is playing a bunch of really, really under cost spells. Yeah. And you're so much more efficient than every other deck in the format. But you're also playing a ton of cards that need enabling. And if you draw too many yeah, of those, you don't draw enough enablers. Yeah, we've seen the rogue story before. That's going to do it for round number two. We are going to head to round number three and hope this last rogue strategy can take down... Argue, I mean, it's definitely the most played deck and still arguably the best deck, and that is Gruel Adventures up against. This thing is Sultai Control, but with some Titan's Nest. It's a, it's a weird one. Go you got Uro back? Nice, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take a five-minute break. Don't go anywhere, and we'll be right back.